So yeah, thanks for, for, the, for the intro. So I'm uh, obviously from Ireland, um, as you may have guessed, although I got accused of being a Newfie there recently, and I tried to explain to it, actually it's like uh, Newfies sound like Irish people, it's not the other way around. Uh, and I'd also like to dispel a myth as well that you know, everyone thinks I cycle everywhere because I failed my driving test, which is true, but not even I can fail it six times in a row. So I did actually pass it about 18 months ago. But we're off, we're, we're, we're only playing off one car today, so we already had a hockey this morning, Soccer's on right now, and I've got something which I can't remember to do this afternoon, but it'll be one of my kids. So, um, I'd like to thank um, uh, the sponsors of this event for uh, inviting me to speak. Um, I'd like to echo uh, Ian Allison's acknowledgement that we are on Treaty 7 land, and being from outside the country, I'm very interested in the history of the place, and it's uh, very rich. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, the McCaig Institute, uh, family, um, I know that Bud McCaig was a patient of my senior colleague Mara Fritzler and has given so much to the university and so much to uh, healthcare in this region. I think we're very lucky to, to, to have them. And then finally, uh, but not least, I'd like to thank the Wood uh, family as well because this is an excellent event. Um, okay, now how do I roll this forward? Here we are, okay, that's me. Okay. Everything we achieve in life is with and through other people. So I wouldn't be standing here today doing, like, telling you about my research work at the McKay Institute without these other people. So this is, he looks like a criminal, but uh, it's actually, which is, how does, where's the pointer there? Oh, God, don't do that. Okay. Could someone help me? Middle bud. Okay. There. That's the pointer, is it? Get rid of that. Sorry about this. It's my... My 11-year-old son built a um, PC with 500 bucks, and I can't even turn on the TV, so. <laughs> Are they getting rid of that? Okay, so the guy here uh, who looks like a criminal is Peter Salat. I don't know if Peter's in the audience, but uh, he's a hard-working radiologist, and he uh, was the first guy who really turned me on to this uh, CT technique that I'm going to tell you about today. Um, over there, the other side of the picture is, uh, yeah, thank you for that, is... Um, for my ineptitude, yeah, great. Oh, I'll go back, yeah, okay, it's, uh, the other guy over there is Yves uh, Pouchard, who runs the Mojo Lab, and then on the far side is um, Namneet Sandhu, who's our research coordinator, I couldn't do anything without Namneet. And in the middle there is the team uh, who uh, work uh, at the McKagan Institute, and in particular, the Mojo Lab. So, outline. As, an, as a rheumatologist, um, you know, I never give up the opportunity to correct my orthopedic colleagues. So <laughs> gout actually is the most common inflammatory arthritis. It's four times more common than rheumatoid arthritis. It's our most badly managed condition. It's the most poorly diagnosed. And arguably, it's the only form of arthritis that's actually curable. So uh, just in, in the interest of linguistics, does anyone know what the word gout means? Pain, no, I don't know where it actually comes from. Taste, that's the real misconception, okay? People think it comes from goo, as in the French goo, gout, and so t thanks for pointing that out. It actually comes from the Latin word gota, which is drop. So the Romans had an idea that gout was this stuff that was in your blood, that was dropped out of your blood into your joints, and they weren't far wrong, and I'll, I'll explain that. So the reason it's important is it's our most common arthritis, it's the most debilitating, and it is arguably the only one that's, that's curable. Why is it so badly managed and why is it so badly treated? Well, well, it's not that difficult to initially diagnose. The management of it is so bad because most people who present with gout have a lot of uric acid buildup in around their joints. When they go on treatment for it, which lowers your uric acid, you start to resorb it from around your joints and you get these terrible flares and they go, well, I'm never taking that crap again. And then, until, and then we go more and more and more and they build up a huge depositional destructive arthritis. Um, which can kill you. How can we fix the problem? We can fix it with better diagnostics and better management, and you can't have one w without the other. So again, serum uric acid. Uric acid is, is this stuff that's in our blood. Urate is a, is a metabolite that somewhere along the way from uh, coming from primates to, to uh, uh, homo sapiens, we lost the ability to metabolize. Urate is an antioxidant, and it's, it's a, it's, it, it's, that's why it's often paradoxically low during an acute attack. So when someone presents with a hot, tender, red, or swollen joint, 
And people get their uric acid level checked. Oh, well, the urate's not high. Well, that's because it's working as an anti-inflammatory at that point in time. But you've kind of missed the boat. And then just because you have high uric acid doesn't mean that you necessarily have gout. However, as your uric acid levels increase, your risk of getting gout goes exponential. So in other words, once you hit beyond 600, your, your, your incident risk of gout is about 10% per year. And then if you get 700, you can actually kind of probably quadruple that. So we know that high uric acid levels are important, but they're not the only thing. Also, certain races and certain ethnic groups appear to precipitate uric, uh, uric acid levels into crystals at much lower concentrations. And so gout's very common in Chinese people, Southeast Asians, Filipinos, and the most common um, incidence of, of, of gout is actually in the New Zealand Maori, and it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's really to, to do with how their, their kidneys handle uh, the ex excretion of uric acid. So it's a, quite an interesting disease from that perspective. This is how we traditionally diagnose it. The gold standard is the demonstration of uric acid crystals in synovial fluid under a microscope. Can you imagine how sore that would be? So you know, that's why we're working on something that's non-invasive, so you don't have to do that. And put down the little ouch there. Um, so, you know, and, and it's your typical uh, gout patient, or your most common gout patient, 50-year-old man who doesn't go to the doctor, and you know, presents with this hot, tender, redder, swollen joint, and it's the musculoskeletal equivalent of man flu. So. Uh, these, 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 these patients are in a lot of pain. So, and then here's how we show it. So I've got on one side, I've got what's called a calcium pyrophosphate crystal. And again, uh, I, I can't miss up another opportunity to correct my orthopedic colleague, but sometimes we do see cartilage, and we see cartilage when it's full of these calcium crystals, so chondrocalcinosis. But anyway, uh, and on the far side, we've got an MSU crystal. Uh, he's going to kill me after this, I know. <laughs> on the far side, we have, an, we, have, we have a monosodium urate crystal. And you know, it's like, they're, these are reasonably similar, but under a particular polarization of the light, we can tell the actual difference in between them. So while the demonstration of, of these crystals in synovial fluid is our you know, gold standard, it's the most specific, but it's not very sensitive because depending on the lab expertise, you can often miss it. Now, this is your radiographic damage. So by the time you get x-ray changes with gout, with these, you call them here, rat bite erosions, we call them mouse bite erosions where I am, but tomato, tomato, um, and apparently you don't have any rats in Alberta, but you've got a lot of mice. It's the first house we moved into when we came over here dragging my wife and three kids over, my homesick wife, it was infested with mice, and we had to move out. And the landlord told us, oh, maybe you brought them from Ireland in your crate. And I was, I don't think so, so that was difficult. But anyway, by the time you get these x-ray changes, you've had you know, significant joint damage, a significant burden of disease, and you're, you know, you know, this is all preventable. You know? um, I showed you the, the one on the right with the, with, the, with the arrow is actually a finger joint, and it's like typically not recognized in upper limb joints, whereas you know, one of the most common joints to get it in is actually your, 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 your elbow. The most common area to get it in is in your big toe, uh, and about 50% of people who, um, who have gout present with it in their big toe. Uh, but about 90% of people, if it's untreated, will actually get it there at some stage. The reason for that being, gout is, 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 is like uric acid is, is in your blood, and your synovial fluid or in around joints is an ultrafiltrate of your blood, and your highest blood pressure right now is in my big toe. So that's one of the reasons why it precipitates out there. So you roll it on. This is what happens when it's left completely untreated. So I'll, like, I'll go over and show you this one. Yeah, this is horrible, and this is a, a real person, a patient of mine. And uh, I have his permission, but uh, this here is the tophaceous deposition that we see in around multiple different joints. And this is what this is his other hand. And if these become, you know, if the skin breaks down, you can get infected. And you get like bugs that live on our skin called Staph aureus or whatever else. And this guy had Staph aureus septicemia from gout. So, you know, it, this is not just something, because I hear some of my colleagues saying, oh, it's just gout. It's just gout when it's badly managed can be, can be very, very uh, severe. Now, that said, we got together with the primary care network here, and uh, you're very lucky in this uh, province that within the, within the Calgary zone, 90% of family doctors now are attached to one of the primary care networks. And uh, the, the uh, leadership of that group is, a, is an, is an uh, excellent group, and they're very good to work with. And with the recognition that gout was so badly managed, I approached them, and uh, we sat down, and we hammered out a gout pathway for family doctors and other physicians on how to manage this very treatable disease. The technology I'm going to show you isn't in this pathway yet because we haven't optimized it and hopefully it will be at some stage 
and uh, it'll be uh, uh, much more useful. This pathway has been downloaded, uh, I don't know, something like a couple of thousand times since it's been, um, since it's been put on their website and we have a, a telephone advice service as well uh, for all sorts of rheum uh, rheumatological conditions but one of the most common ones is gout and, and, uh, and there's a lot of myths around how it's managed which I won't get into today but you can ask me afterwards. Um, the benefits of the management of it. So we, we have very effective medications that can lower your uric acid. So that's one thing. Like I explained to you earlier on, when people go on these urate-lowering therapies, they're not put on something to prevent them getting flare-ups. And that's the real key to the, um, uh, the usefulness of the CT scan. Because if you demonstrate that people have uric acid crystals in and around their joints and they've got a higher burden of deposition, you need to treat them differently. And we also have very effective treatments for that, but they're just not utilized. And this is somebody, and this is, this is the same person, and you can see, see the little finger there, so the, the left fifth digit, this was amputated because of, of gout, but this is somebody who was treated appropriately with proper urate lowering therapy and put on something to prevent them getting flare-ups while the, those crystals are being reabsorbed, and it's the same hand a year later, and you can see all those big lumps of what we call TOFI have been reabsorbed through effective management. So, where is this all bringing us? A picture speaks a thousand, world, so, a thousand words, so dual energy CT is a novel application of an existing technology. So a CT scan is really just an advanced x-ray that's cut into a sort of a 3D shape. This dual energy CT is using a specific software that looks at stuff in and around joints and said, this is either calcium or this is urate. So how do we decide what it is? And that's what we use what's called a threshold value. Now currently, the thresholding values are, you know, arbitrary. So you can, depending on how you set it, you can make it look like one thing or the other. So what we're doing with our, with our, with our colleagues at the McKay Institute is we're using this technology. I'm scanning patients that I have, or we're scanning patients I have that we know they've got polyarticular, so lots of different joints involved, tophaceous deposition, and we're using their actual absorbency to set the threshold to, to scan all their other joints. So, you know, we, I, we, we, we should be finished probably by early new year, we'll be analyzing the data and we're going to come up with a new protocol for this technique. So it'll be very, very useful. And this is what the pictures look like. So if you see the hand on the left in like figure A there, so that like to, a, to an untrained eye, they could say, oh, does that look like rheumatoid? Or, you know, it's, it's, we know it's not like a, a completely normal functional hand. And then when we look at it under, under our dual energy CT with the B and the C on the right, all the green stuff is, is a tophaceous deposition. So we know that that person has polyarticular tophaceous gout by this imaging. And you get lovely, clear 3D pictures that, you know, can, can, can guide you on how to manage these patients and then cure this uh, most common arthritis. Okay, that's me. <laughs>